to take you through some accessibility features in iPad, which we think will make life a little bit easier. iPad involves a lot of swiping and dragging up and down. But for some people, that's actually a bit of a challenge. Getting the right menu to appear with a swipe can sometimes not always work. So Apple know that and they think there's a good way to help people just use that touch feature without having to press buttons together or swipe here and swipe there, just using that single touch. I'm going to give you an example here um, with an iPad. Um, you might want to take a screenshot of a map, for example, and draw on top of it. But in order to do that screenshot, you need to press the home button and the wake power button at the same time. That's a bit cumbersome, isn't it? getting those two pressed at the same time. Most of the time I usually switch them off. So um, I might want to be drawing uh, uh, on a map. As I say, I'll use my pen, choose a particular thickness. On the three dots in the bottom right hand corner, I want to draw with my finger rather than the pencil. If I've got a pencil or some other such implement, it's quite easy to do this as a, with a, a pencil. And perhaps this is a map, a running map around Perth and um, that you may want to get some miles on the clock. And then I can say done and save that to photos. But that's really challenging doing that, pressing the button, those two buttons at the same time. So if we go to the settings menu on the device, I'm going to show you a way of just using touch to take that screenshot. When you open up settings, there will be an accessibility menu that you can choose. And on that accessibility menu, there's an option called touch. The touch has another feature with inside it called assistive touch. And when we tap on that, I can switch that on at the top. What will happen is a little box will appear. Now you can hold your finger on that little box and move it around to where you want to position it on the screen. And when you let go, it will fade, but it'll still be there for you to access. That's going to be your assistive touch menu. When you tap on it, you can see that a number of things appear. What are those buttons? So instead of dragging down from the top, I can use the assistive menu to get that control center appearing. That's much better rather than swiping. If I press the device button, you'll see I've got options for volume up and volume down. Some people find the volume buttons at the side really hard to get at. There's some further features, one of which you can see is screenshot. So let's open up that map back up. Let's have a look at our assistive touch button. We'll tap on that. We'll go to device. We'll go to more. And then we'll see that screenshot. So just with a touch, I can take a picture. Not pressing two buttons together really awkwardly, but touch to make that screenshot happen. There were just three touches and that's made me very happy. Okay, that's us done with that. Now I want to go back to that assistive but touch button. Uh, I'm going to tap on device and then I'm going to tap on more and I'm going to choose the app switcher button. Normally we have to swipe up from the bottom to make that happen, happen or double click on the home button, but we've just got one touch that does that. Or we can press home and that'll take us back to your home screen rather than pressing the physical home button. You'll notice there's the option to customise that top level menu, that menu when you first press that, that first time you press it. We've got six um, icons here we can click on, but you can extend that to eight. And sometimes that's quite useful because rather than click on a device and then on the more button, I can click on the plus button here and choose an option that I would normally have on the more menu perhaps. So I'm going to move screenshot right around from the third menu in three taps, I'm going to make it available from this very top menu. That's what I'm customizing. I might then want to click on the other plus or maybe that notification center button because I don't use that very often. Let me change that to maybe the volume up button. So again, it's at the top level rather than hidden in a sub menu. And then I'll use volume down. And that means that's available to me right from the moment I press that, that accessibility, that assistive touch button. Just to show you how versatile this is, let's add another option. Let's scroll down and have a look at the scroll up button. So rather than swiping to scroll up, you just do a touch. 
And then I've got rid of Siri. I might not want to use Siri to control the device. And so I'm going to change that to scroll down. Now let's see how this works. Let me go to Safari and find a web page. Home BBC News is always a favourite. And then with her assistive touch button, I will choose scroll down. And now when I tap on the screen, what happens is it scrolls down. Rather than, I just touch it there, it looks as if I'm swiping, but in actual fact, I just touch it once and it will swipe down. And when I switch to the scroll up button, now when I touch, now when I touch, <laughs> it scrolls up. So it's just a touch and it looks as if it's swiping, but it's not, that's all control with a touch. So let's look at assistive touch again. We've got that top level. When we press device, it takes us to some more options. And then when we tap on more, it takes us to more options. Really powerful way of giving you some control of the device without having to have those really large swipe skills. One feature we love is speak selection. Simply tap on the first word drag it along and down and that will highlight some text. Then you can tap on the block of text and it'll give you an option to speak. Sometimes it'll give you an option to use a language. Captain Tom Moore's life story is to become the subject of a major new film. UK companies Fret Films and Powder Cake Pictures have bought the rights to the feature about the former British Army captain. So this is a really amazing feature. I'm going to show you how to do that. First of all, we're going to go to our settings menu, back into accessibility. Now we're going to look for spoken content, and then we're going to switch on the two buttons for speak selection and speak screen. You can change the voices that appear and are used in this um, feature um, across lots of different accents. Um, we just have to use the Alex voice, but you can change that, and you can change the speaking rate. Speak selection read selected con speak selection read select speak selection read selected content. So we'll now take a look at speak screen. Um, websites like this are often awfully very busy as we saw earlier. So I want to move into the reader view of that. So I tap on the double A's, I choose reader view, it strips out all of the extra noise. And now I'm going to be able to use speak screen. So I swipe using two fingers down from the top and it'll bring up this menu. Six, the musical from bedroom to Broadway, almost Toby Marlowe and Lucy Moss, even by 2020 standards. Now this menu will Toby hide and, and then you can Moss hold your finger on it and move it to the side. From humble beginnings in a uni bedroom to the bright lights of Broadway, the story of six is every writer's dream. But Lucy Moss and Toby Marlowe's musical, which turns... So I find the best way to use this is in Reader View and then you can read the text on the website and there's other applications you can use this Reader View on. Okay, now swiping down from the top, that means two fingers off the edge of the screen and swiping down can be annoying. So let's go back to Settings. And I want to show you how to do using our Assistive Touch feature we looked at earlier on. Let's make it so that we can get it to speak the screen just by pressing one of the assistive touch buttons. So I'm going to change what the scroll up button does. I'm going to change that so that it says speak screen. So there's a button there to speak the screen when I use assistive touch. So let's go back to that web page. Let's go back to reader view and then use assistive touch speak screen. Even by 2020 standards, Toby Marlowe and Lucy Moss have been on quite the journey. Now I want to look at zoom. And we're on a website, we can zoom in quite easily with pinching two fingers apart to zoom into the writing and moving left and right. But there's a, a nicer way for lots of people to use zoom um, and that's through again the accessibility menu. So let's open that up from settings. There we go. And accessibility, I'm one of the first ones there, the second one down, zoom. Now, before I switch zoom on, I want to choose some options. I'm going to change the zoom region, first of all, so that it's window zoom. And then I'm going to switch the controller on. 
and then I'm going to switch zoom on at the top. So I can move this little window around using this part of the, the screen. Keep my finger held on it and move around. Or I can use the controller in the bottom right hand corner which has appeared. So if we tap on that and move, so tap and move and you'll be able to move around the screen like so. Now we can move around the screen if I press the home button. Now when I move it around you'll see that all the icons get big and that can be really helpful for a lot of users. I could tap on the app store for example and then I can move around the screen and everything gets bigger um, when I do that. If I tap on the controller, down in the bottom right hand corner, just tap on it once, I'll get a sub menu and it's in there that I can change the level of zoom. I can resize the lens. I just adjust each one of those points, hold my finger on it and move it to adjust the size of that. And if I tap on it once more, just once, I can zoom out to take it back to nothing again. So you can easily switch that controller on and off. I want to show you the magnifier tool now. Um, when you switch it on, what you have to do to get access to it is to triple click the home button. And then when you do that, a menu will appear that will allow you to choose magnifier. What it gives me is a little slider that will change the magnification of my camera so that when I'm holding over text, I can use that little slider to zoom in and out of that text, especially if it's really small, you know, like in the back of food packaging and things like that. And as I move the slider in, I can then move the iPad about, but you can see that it's a little bit jerky. So I can take a picture of that by pressing the take picture button. And what that'll do is it'll stabilize it and then it'll allow me to use my fingers to move across the writing so that I can read it in a more stable way. I can actually use pinch to pinch out to show you that it's actually pick, you know, captured that as a whole picture, but it allows me to zoom in when I want to and move my finger across to read what I need to read. Other features available in this and things are like filters. So you can choose a filter um, apart from just the zoom, but as I've shown you again there, we can use a filter to change things like the brightness um, that you might want to make it darker or lighter. But if I tap on that light again, the filter button there that I'm going to tap on, just here, will give you several different kinds of ways of viewing it. So red on black, or black on red, black on yellow, or up to my favourite, which is um, white on blue. And that's quite handy. And if you leave that setting on, it'll always be white on blue every time you start magnifier. Um, but what you can do is you can, when you open it up in that middle section, swipe back till you get back to the one you want, which would maybe the original one. Now, of course, if you want to use assistive touch for this again, um, rather than having to press the home button three times, you can go back to your assistive touch menu to customize it and this time add accessibility shortcut. So that when you have assistive touch set up, You'll just need to press the button once. I suppose it would help if I switch assistive touch on. So there that button appears. And now when you tap on it, you'll see in the bottom right hand, left hand corner, you've got accessibility shortcut. And that will give you access to that magnifier. Again, pressing that home button three times can be really quite challenging. So the mirror features there in accessibility do with display and text size. So for example, if I choose bold text, you see the bold text appears. It's quite subtle. You'll see it existing across apps. The bold will appear. That might help you. Uh, large text, when I switch that on, will really only affect those apps that have got this setting connected to it. So you can see, obviously, in these menus on the left-hand side, they get bigger, which might help for particular. That might be really useful for you in the menu system for settings to see these words bigger. But it doesn't exist across all apps, unfortunately. You just need to play around with that. I'll switch that off and back to normal. Um, button shapes doesn't do very much at all. It just puts an underline up under across particular forward and backward buttons. On off labels is when, well, for example, we've got um, for the bold text button, for example, you know it's on because it's gone green. 
but in many assisted living facilities and many modern switches, um, there's a one to show you that it's on and there's a zero to show you that it's off. So if I put on the on off labels, then that's what I'll get. I'll get a zero for one, a one for on and a zero for off, etc. Um, I can, if I go down here, look at color filters. So if you've got color blindness, for example, then you might find that really useful. Um, also, if you've got dyslexia and I've got a challenge reading things because of your particular vision challenge, if I switch this on, I've automatically got, well, in this particular instance, I've got a color tint on, which is green at the moment. Can you see that tick next to color tint? Um, if I've got um, an issue like that, I can choose the hue, change the hue of that so that it's, if I don't want green and I wanted, you know, a kind of blue hue, and that allowed me to read things better. When I press the home button, I see the entire world through that filter. So the filter sits across the device all the time. So if I'm on the internet, it's got that blue filter and that follows me everywhere. I can change that. If I've got color blindness, for example, I could do the red green filter. And what that'll do is every video I watch or you know, web page I go to will accommodate for that particular issue that I have. So color filters are really, really powerful. Okay, just a couple of other features just above the accessibility menu, and I hope you found that vision segment useful to you. Above the accessibility menu, you'll find home screen and dock, and my icons are all that particular size at the moment because it means I can fit more icons on the screen at once for my apps and other things. If, however, I go to bigger, well, it does what it says in the tin. So. All of my icons now are much, much bigger and maybe easier for me to see. So that may be some useful for some uh, users. Uh, but I'm just going to keep mine so that I can fit more on the screen. Just above home screen and dock, we've got display and brightness. And brightness you can move up and down, obviously, using a little slider. But we also have got light and dark mode available to us. Now, you're currently in light mode. Just watch what happens when I switch to dark. Dark mode gives me that darker background. Maybe things pop out a little bit better and easier for some people to read, especially on these menus. I mean, obviously, if you go into an app like um, Safari, the pages are still going to appear that way because it's white background for those websites. But you'll notice that at the top of the, the, the program Safari, that background is indeed dark. So it's just a, a, a quick switch on or off. Uh, just one final thing then, if we go to the Apple um, website and we do a quick search, then we can look for um, manuals if you're needing to find out more information. So if I type in manuals here into the Apple store, and then that first link for featured manuals, on this page, you've got manuals for Apple Watch, iPhone, but we want the ones for iPad. Now, if we have, as I suspect lots of people have currently on iPad OS 13, you'll find that down here. And if I tap on that, iPad user guide for iPad OS 13, iOS 13, you'll find lots about how to use the iPad. Lots of things you can do, but you can go to the table of contents for the user guide and you'll see there's options down here for accessibility to find out how to use the different accessibility features. If, however, you've upgraded to iPadOS 14, that also appears here on this manuals page for iPad just right here. You can view both the iPad OS 14 and the 13 as a book, as an Apple book, if you've got an Apple ID. So I could go to Apple Books. It'll open it up in the iPad's Books um, application. And again, if you've got an Apple ID, you can just simply tap on Get and that will appear in your bookstore inside Apple Books. If I want to find out which iOS I'm currently on, I can go to the Settings menu. I can go to the general tab, I can choose about, and it'll tell me which software version I'm currently on. I hope that's been useful to you.